guys, Tacoma Comics coming at you here with a little mini haul, kind of some life updates and let you know what's been going on. It's been a while since I've had a video and I want you to think I fell off the face of the earth. Uh, let's start off with subscribers. I've got like 76 OMG Chris. Shout out to you. My most recent subscriber, I think he saw a comment I put on uh, was it Comic Holics channel. They he got they got a big AOK -okay from him. So uh, shout out to him for my latest subscriber. Appreciate that. Uh, don't have much of a haul here. I am busy, super busy, and I'm saving for Emerald City Comic Con in, in 10 days or so, 10 or 11 days, coming up real soon. Uh, I got some eBay auctions up, um, Animosity number one, Harley Quinn number one, and a little mini X-Men lot. Um, I'm going to put a, a screenshot here. It's Ian Newcastle. If you're interested in, in bidding, there's like zero bids. Uh, they end tonight. I'm not a big eBayer, so I'm not like upset about it. Uh, but, you know, if you see something you want, let me know, and I'll, I'll easily, easily make a deal with you um, if, if the auction doesn't go through. You know, I wouldn't take them off the auction. That's not fair, but a couple hours from now, that auction's done and down. So, uh, here's a screenshot of that auction so you can find the stuff. And we're back. Oh, that was a great edit, magic of uh, video editing. So, uh, Chinese New Year, we celebrated on Saturday. My wife and I had off, I had off, she took off Friday, did all the shopping, all the prepping on Friday, did all the cooking Saturday, um, had a great time. 12 dishes, Let's see if I can get them all. We had rice, fried rice, we had a duck, roast duck, we had um, lingo, which is a rice cake with um, pork and um, pork and uh, shiitake mushroom dish. We had shrimp, we had uh, pork and spinach dumplings. We had um, steamed uh, pork pork buns, tatsu bao they're called. Um, steamed fish with ginger and scallions. Uh, a few other dishes and lose. Oh, we had um, short ribs of black bean sauce, uh, chicken and broccoli, bok choy, and if that's not 12, that's, that's enough. We got plenty of leftovers in the fridge. So real successful time. Um, Went with uh, Lagunitas, a little something something ale as the uh, drink of the night, along with a lot of wine. Had two families over and uh, had a great time, man. Kids are laughing, families are laughing, um, adults are having a good time eating food and stuff, so really enjoyed the company. Um, like I said, being uh, busy with that, soccer season started, go Falcons. We won our first two games this year, so we are now... 32 and 0 since I've been coaching, uh, three undefeated seasons. So I'm pretty proud of my girls there. Great team. Let's take a look at the comics. Uh, in between all the prep work for uh, Chinese New Year, took the oldest son to guitar lesson yesterday, then drove over to Half Price Bookshop during his lesson with my younger son, and uh, they had a 20% off sale for President's Day weekend. And I figured Chinese New Year. I was just talking about Tatsu Bao, right down here. Those are some steamed, looks like they could be the um, style dumplings that you poke the top in, but it looks like they're the steamed buns. Hard to tell from here, but uh, new Superman number one, I figured that was pretty fortuitous. Found it for like um, $1.50 or something. I think that's a variant cover. And then there's the uh, the regular cover. So it's pretty excited to find new Superman number one on Chinese New Year. Felt like that's Destiny, you gotta buy that. And picked up new Superman number two. I'll read those two, see if I like them, and uh, if I do, I'll, I'll look for a trade or something. Now, coming up, I made myself a promise, and I'm sure you've made yourself promises too. Don't start following more comics until you get the ones you want, finish this run, finish that one, find that issue. At some point, you got to slow down and say, enough is enough. So Wicked and Divine, I missed the first few issues when it started in 2014 or 15. I've read the first two trades, though. Really great comic. And then I found some Wicked and Divine, good condition, cheap prices, 20% off, and now I'm probably getting another series. I'm trying to complete a run of another series. There is issue 15. I love the artwork on this by uh, Jamie McKelvey, one who designed the uh, Olympic ski team uh, uniforms, look like the superheroes. What is this? There is 17 as well. Not as well, there's 17. What do we got there? 18. 
19. Now some of these with the, the white frame are the cover B's, but some of them the cover A's. So it's, it's not consistent. Um, so it's not always a variant cover when you get that white framing. Sometimes that's the original cover. There's issue 22. 25, and I really like this cover. So that was really good. Moving on, I found issue 29. This is the variant to 29, which I also think is a really cool cover. And this is a variant to um, one of the one shots they do for 55 AD. Um, I haven't read this yet. I've got the um, the original cover, but uh, I have read the 1870, I think it's 1873 one shot, and I really like that. So looking forward to this. Uh, pretty cool to find that. Found myself a little uh, Baltimore Comic Con Retailer Summit uh, Shattered Empire. I liked Shattered Empire. I really liked Shattered Empire. Um, the idea that Return of the Jedi, you blow up the Death Star, and then you know every single stormtrooper throughout the galaxy uh, stops fighting that instant instant is silly. The more probable outcome is that the fighting will wind its way down shortly and there'll be some holdouts. Um, you know, if you remember Gilgan's Island TV show, they used to come across uh, Japanese warriors in the Pacific <laughs> still fighting World War II. Um, so the idea that it just ended right away was kind of silly. This is a lot more realistic, I think. Um, and I like that they made a little series that kind of explored what was going on. So pretty cool. Um, so that's all. I figured that was pretty short. So I don't usually do new comic calls. Um, I'm too busy during the week and, uh, everybody knows the new comics that are coming out, but I thought I'd do a, a new comic call for a new comic Wednesday. Just, just this one. So, uh, Picked up the, I guess this is the second printing. Um, of, uh, I'm pretty sure because this is, yeah, second printing because I know the first printing looks different. And the second printing, um, I guess they put this out to remind people it's still out because the first issue came out in like October, maybe November. Really great, great story. Great issue. Um, great artwork. A lot of fun. Good read. Powerful. Um, and then nothing. Second issue is finally said to be coming out couple weeks or something so I think they just did another printing this to remind people that it's still around uh, also really nice uh, back cover so that was pretty cool Cal exit pick that up if you haven't already I, I recommend it Tacoma comma comics recommends it Tacoma comma I should call myself Tacoma comma uh, Black Monday murders um, if you're not reading this it's it's a real interesting story by Jonathan Hickman um, the occult, uh, money, powerful families, world domination, mysticism. And for most of the story, you've been following this dogged detective um, through it as, as he kind of is dealing with these powers beyond its control. And I did not expect the twist at the end of this story. I won't give it away, but there's a really cool twist at the end of the story. Um, definitely pick it up if you've been lagging on it. Um, if you haven't gotten into it, maybe get the trade, you know, otherwise it's eight issues back, but still pretty cool. Miss Marvel, one of my uh, monthly favorites. I am a huge Miss Marvel fan, which you probably already know if you followed any of my videos. Um, I love the character and potential. I used to love all the stories. Some of the stories um, in this volume, volume four, haven't always been as powerful. I thought every story in volume three was great. Um, some of the stories have, some haven't. Uh, but this last arc, starting with issue 25, I think, going 25, 26, and 27, G. Willow Wilson has taken some huge risks in that the title character, Miss Marvel, Kamala Khan, has not appeared in any of those issues. Um, and I think that is really pretty phenomenal. Uh, she's got her little um, cadre of, of villain friends who are trying to carry on her, her legacy, Marvel legacy. Uh, while she's missing in action, but um, and the Red Daggers in there, a new character is introduced earlier, um, which is pretty cool too. But just the idea that uh, you you write a story and you don't have your title character in that story for three straight issues, I think it takes a lot of guts, and and I really commend her for that. It, it's kept me interested. I'm like, I want to read this. I want to figure out what's going on. So, good on ya. Um, put these in order this time. I read a couple of the um, 
young animal stuff. Mother Panic is one of them. Uh, this is part two in the Milk Wars. I'm putting that in quotes because I have no idea what Milk Wars is other than the fact that there's milk involved and it makes people see and do things that are against their nature. The best way I can describe it. Uh, this story is written by Jody Hauser and, and I, I dig Jody Hauser, but I wasn't like in love with this story. Um, it was good. It, it just wasn't great. It was another like Weird things happening at Gather House, where she originally was abused as a child, and but also trained as a child. Um, and Batman, of course, is the priest running it. Um, he's been drinking the milk. Once the milk stopped, um, he woke up to reality. And, you know, that's really it. Read it if you're into it. Um, it it's not a great Batman story. It's an okay Mother Panic story. It doesn't really move things too much unless you're following Milk Wars. They're going to reboot um, all the young animal line. And so I am... Probably going to stick with Mother Panic. I'm going to drop the next one I'm going to show you uh, just because I need to cut down somewhere. But I wanted to point out down here, uh, Magdalene Visaggio has a short in the back of this for something called Eternity Girl, which is a new um, young animal comic that she's writing. And she's a really great writer. If you've read, read Kim and Kim or Quantum Teams or a Go, uh, give it a check out. Really like it. So, eh, it's there. We read comics. Not all of them are great. This one I thought was pretty cool uh, for a few reasons. Shade is really weird. Loma, um, who play, not plays, but who is Shade the Changing Girl, is is bizarre with the way she thinks and interacts as an alien entity who donned a mystical, magical, scientifically impossible coat that brings her into other people's bodies and different realities. Um, and that character is played to great effect in Milk Wars. Um, the whole, like deal that's going on with this domesticated Wonder Woman and she's got these multiple personalities or multiple aspects of her personality all fighting to keep things happy and simple and, and um, the way they are with a domesticated Wonder Wife, not Wonder Woman, is pretty, oh by the way, spoiler alert, <laughs> I'm spoiling this book, uh, it's pretty good, um, but the uh, you know, the, the, the different aspects of her personality you're fighting to get Wonder Woman to remember that she was Wonder Woman and she was more than a, a housewife. And there's some real uh, cute takes on, I don't mean cute like trite, but cute like funny, um, takes on, on, on feminism and women's marches and stuff and some really great bits in here that I like. And again, a little short from Mags on uh, the new comic Eternity Girl, which I'm definitely going to get the first issue of and pick up and see where it goes from there. Uh, like I said, Shade was a cool read for me. I never read Shade the Changing Man. Um, everybody said that was great back in the, the 90s, I guess it was. Um, I don't think I'm going to continue with Shade when they reboot it with the new Young Animal stuff, but uh, it was it was a cool read, and this comic, definitely good. I don't know what the first one in the Milk Wars was. I think it was Cave Carson and Superman, and I never read Cave Carson has a cybernetic eye, so I don't really know what that's about. Uh, please excuse the pun. This comic is killing it. Um, really, really great. If you're following it, this issue has a lot of twists and turns. Um, gets deeper into what's going on with Dylan, into you know the difference between being psychotic or mentally ill and how drugs can affect you and make you more or less ill, or if they cure you one way, they mess you up another way. Um, and just some great pure... Brewbreaker stuff in here. Um, I won't ruin this one with any spoilers. Definitely, if you're reading this, continue to read it. If not, jump on anywhere with a trade paperback. It, it's really good. One thing that I like that they do in this, and I didn't like it at first, right? Um, the, the character Dylan, it, it starts off by showing him either killing someone or running away from the cops or something or being chased by the mafia. And he's like, oh, let me tell you what happened to get to this point. And then he goes back to the beginning of like the, the story for that comic. And at first it was a little trite or gimmicky, but um, Brubaker's really pulled it off by being consistent with it and treating it as a important storytelling element and not as just something trite. And I think that's done a really good job in making it work in service of the story. So it, it, it doesn't phase me anymore when I read it and I really enjoy it. Last one for today, Abbott. Um, I picked this up because I heard that, that uh, Saladin Ahmed was... Uh, did a great run on Black Bolt, and uh, I had missed that totally, so I wanted to try something new. Um, so you just started this over at Boom, and I missed the first issue when it came out. But on the Boom Studios website, I got this uh, variant number one. So I ordered it, and uh, came, I read it, and 
really, really cool. Uh, investigative journalism cliches abound, but the actual character of, of Abbott, Miss Abbott to you, um, is so well written um, that it overrides the cliches, right? She's a dogged journalist. She's the only woman journalist. She's the only African-American journalist. It's in Detroit in the 1970s. The police don't like when she shows up to break open the story of their corruption. Uh, other journalists don't like her, except for the few that, that have befriended her. Her boss knows her worth, but still treats her differently without probably even realizing it or kind of, you know, in, in, intending to. Um, so there's a, a lot of um, cliches about, about racism, about journalism, about cops and reporters. But the, like I said, the character is written well enough that it becomes a, a personal and true story and not like a, just a cliche. And then, you know, throw in a good hand of occult mysticism and ritualized murders. And you've got a great sci-fi investigative journalism Detroit 1970s comic, which I definitely suggest as well. So that's it for me today. Um, I'm going to have a video coming up soon, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, showing how I prepare for Comic-Con um, because I'm a nerd and so are you. And that's why you're watching this. And uh, you'll see kind of the process I go through and getting ready. And then I'll have definitely some big videos after Comic-Con showing my hauls and all my signed books and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave you before my little outro. I'm going to leave you with a picture of the egg rolls because I got to be in charge of the egg rolls this year. Um, rolled all of them myself. You can see they're not perfectly even, but for my first try, I think it was pretty good. All right. Have a good day, guys. Take care.